We are going to uh, talk today to, with Mike Zone from Dumpster Fire Press. Hang tight. Hey, Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm right here. All right, I should probably join you, huh? Nah, yeah. Hey, hey man. Going on? Good, good. I'm, I'm uh, introduced Mike Zone from Dumpster Fire Press. Let's chat, buddy. How are you? No, uh, you know we're hanging in there. Good, good. All COVID it out and uh, staying quarantined. Yeah, you know, uh, doing something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, it sounds like you got uh, this Dumpster Fire Press thing going on. Let's talk a little bit about that today. Um, okay. So Let's take a minute and introduce who Mike Zone is to the audience so we know a little bit about you. Well, uh, God, you know, some people say I'm pretty prolific as a poet. Uh, I guess I'm a poet, writer, failed screenwriter who got into poetry. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll tell you my little con man way of writing. I uh, put some stuff onto Amazon years ago, self-publishing started submitting to Spain uh, like I was a pretend poet uh, all of a sudden uh, got published in a few international and a few international publications in, in between hangovers horror sleaze trash started building a uh, somewhat of a name for myself in the states and uh, that's how I got here I wound up uh, actually uh, getting published by Alien Buddha Press I have three collections of poetry out Void Beneath the Skin A Farewell to Big Ideas and my latest uh, one hell of a muse. Uh, let's see. Recently, I just published The Grind uh, as our first book from Dumpster Fire Press. Uh, that was a collaborative effort between myself, uh, the guy known as Wolfman, Roz Washington, and Robin Rag uh, Robert Ragan. Uh, with some art by James Mosh, a uh, really cool kick ass painter from New York. Uh, right. I've been um, just a few things thrown around. Uh, I frequently write for Synchronized Chaos, uh, Punk, Punk uh, Noir Magazine. That's one of my favorite publications ever since Ben John Smith left Horace Lee's Trash. <laughs> I think for a good place to wheel my wares, uh, my, my sick little stories. Uh, thanks to um, my editor at Synchronized yeah, Chaos. Yeah, they, 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 they're a different breed, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks to my editor at Synchronized Chaos. I wrote, uh, I wrote a story that was nominated for Best of the Net. And not that I really care about any of that stuff, but it would be kind of cool to be nominated for a push card prize. Uh, this year alone, I had this goal of uh, being published uh, 50, about 55 times, got published 56 times. I'm burned the hell out, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> but my greatest, uh, my greatest uh, accomplishment is finally becoming a uh, contributing poet to Mad Swirl and being put into their best of a Mad Swirl anthology uh, 2019, where I wrote about my uh, my associations in a uh, low life in the low life underworld. <laughs> yeah, man, I've been a lurker at uh, Mad Swirl for a long time. Um, yeah, uh, Rob Dyer, uh, David Parham. Oh. Um, is, uh, is, was a great, great friend of mine. And, uh, and of course, all the people that are super supportive of the arts and everything they do is just fan damn tastic. And I yeah, know no everybody, please go check out Matt Swirl. Um, they're all over the web and, and, uh, Facebook. So go and visit our friends. Yeah, for sure. I'll be so, doing a reading. So now that uh, you're all, now that you're all burned out though, I mean, it sounds like a perfectly good time to start a new endeavor. It does. It is. <laughs> yeah, um, this endeavor, and I'm going to be as diplomatic as uh, possible. When a uh, life hands you a dumpster fire, what do you do? You start a press. Um, or yeah, move so, into the White House, as the case may be. You know, that, you know that's, a, that's more of a Doctor Strange love uh, scenario. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I could have the whole Doctor Strange love, I mean, it has been like a Kubrick meet movie uh last year uh, i'll say that but um with some yeah, cool. with some woody allen <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding very soon we'll be uh, getting into the marquee to side but not in the cool philosophical way no, no, no. <laughs> cool so tell us about the uh, about the press okay well dumpster fire press uh first and foremost uh 
I keep saying our probably is one day. Yeah, yeah. I might have more than just myself doing this. So our mission is to get a is to provide a voice for the voiceless uh, people. You don't sell them here. I mean, we're talking about um, one guy, uh, Roz Washington, guy I collaborated with. Um, mm -hmm. Moved uh, Grand Rapids poet, hip hop artist. Uh, decided to pick up, moved to Arizona. Lived out hotels uh, every so often. Uh, was living at in and out of hotels. Great guy, great poet. Don't want him to get ignored. Sends right. poetry to me uh, via cell phone. Right now, I'm tra transcribing his book from block text. Uh, he looks over the. He approves my line breaks. Things like that. You're not going to hear from. Uh, you're not going to hear Roz Washington from the mainstream. Right. Uh, we got. Uh, we got a. Uh, I have this poet uh, just emailed to me. Uh, Malenko is his last name. I f forgive me if he's watching this. I forgot his first name. He lives in Montenegro. He is a Croatian marine engineer. Sent me a 20-page chat book. Uh, you're not gonna. You're not gonna hear much of that. Uh, I'm. I'm just highlighting artists, writers. Uh, I know I, I'm kind of going all over the place. So let me well, give you the. No, I mean I think it's admirable. I, I, you know, my own experience has been um, through some of the social networks as well as um, yeah. you know live stuff that you know there's. A, a, I mean I think about there was a radio show that I was uh, involved with called uh, Right and Radio with Diana Rose. Everybody knows Diana. Um, she's super super lady. I love with all my heart. But she, you know. There was, we had many, many, many people who are not mainstream, but at least visible and heard now um, as a result of that show. And that, so I get it, you know, uh, the idea is um, to, to let those voices free to, to say what they, what needs to be said. Uh, yeah, and uh, us old timers sometimes we don't say it the right way. You know, we use the wrong. No, way. It's, it's cool, and uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's the primary mission, and uh, you know, put some good, put some good shit out there. And then there are people who aren't going to get a chance to get published. Well, you know, hey, let me put a book together for you. I'm, I'm gonna be frank. I'm not doing it for the money right now. It's a nice little hop. We're gonna call it a nice little hobby, but you know, uh, one of my. Uh, Former editors at Concrete Mist Press was like, call me a goddamn miracle worker. Uh, the way I edit books, I, I've done editing for Alien Buddha Press and uh, and all that jazz. And and this is how I kind of got into it. I uh, got involved with another small press. And like I said, I'm gonna be diplomatic. I'm not gonna say anything negative uh, about anyone. There are a few issues with uh, an author or two, and uh, and another publisher. And I I was advised to jump ship. You know. Um, I wasn't going to fully jump ship. I uh, created, you know, I felt like I inherited a dumpster uh, fire, and what I was going to do, I wanted to alleviate that. So I created a separate avenue for people who didn't want to do business with this, who didn't want to be associated with this press, and but yet wanted me to edit their work. And you know, of course, uh, there there was a rift with a a, a work, piece of work we'll call it the grind, and it is the grind. And uh, everyone still has copyright to this book. I'm not. I'm not going to talk down to it. everyone's copyright with this book. They can do what they want with the book. This edition, you know, we had the artist, uh, we had the uh, three other poets involved go for it. One poet wasn't really for it. It was meant to help him out. He wasn't happy with it, but you know, we got the work out there because we had three guys, we had like three other guys that wanted their work out there and they're waiting for this project. This project was done like in May and we were all ready to go and we released it in October and we released it in October. And, um, I, and I'm not making any money personally. I'm not making any money off this. Uh, not even as a press. I charge a dime per page is our first title. All proceeds are going to the Drug Policy Alliance. Is, uh, again, I'm all about social, I'm about social justice in that way and uh, reforming, well, no, reforming laws. You know, and, and here's the thing. I mean, we take dumpster fires and we, we do something with them or we don't. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been around for a long time in the politics and the drama that is centered around egoic uh, outcries uh, from people who want to be heard is kind of a given. <laughs> And so from wherever that comes from, it, it does nothing to further the mission. And the mission is no. 
you know, what, what, whatever your reason is for writing, you, you take that reason and, and create something that fulfills that need, um, or drives it further as the case may be. So, you know, the idea is to take that energy and put it somewhere where it's going to benefit somebody else. And, sure. and, and, you know, one of the things that I've seen happen is we developed this, you know, response to the world that we live in where everybody's communicating in different ways. So, you know, we're not all meeting in bars and having cocktails and, and slam poeting each other uh, from a stage. You know, we, we have to adapt and we have to change. So it, I think it's time for all of us to kind of grow up a little bit. And, and, yeah. and if, you know, the, let the business part be the business part. Let the art do the art. And, you know, the two may meet, but at the same time, um, there has to be some sort of focus on whatever the mission is. And for me personally, and I, and the social yet distance collective, that goal is to, you know, serve the community, the bigger community with Words as healing, words as therapy, words as words, words as a story, words as an explanation for your life. However, you, you know, yeah. however or whatever. And I use the term words because I write more than not. Um, but art is applicable there as well. So, you know, all the drama and bullshit, you know how that goes, brother. Yeah, um, I, I, I do. And, uh, and that's why, you know, I, I'm not an aggressive publisher in the sense that we're going to put out one, and maybe if we're lucky, we have a really slim chat book, two titles a month, and I'm talking about three quarterly anthologies. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, I have Voices from the Fire. Right. Each week, we're going to promote a prose artist. We're going to promote one poet. We're going to promote a visual artist. And at the end, that is collected in a year-end anthology, a nice, tangible year-end anthology. And, so uh, as it develops, where do we see that work that becomes the anthology? <clears throat> you see the tangible version of that, hopefully. And the, well, you see the tangible version, uh, version at the end of the year. Hopefully you see these people. Maybe you gain enough confidence. Maybe they get more publication credits. Maybe they become more known. I don't care if they publish with Dumpster Five. I don't care if they're storyboarding for Hollywood after this. Well, I mean, yeah. I think I think more what I'm asking is is if uh, if you got a new writer that's in the in the group there, how do where do we see samples of that person's work? Is it all? Oh, I, I'm so, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, you you will see it on Voices from the Fire. You're going to see it Voices from the Fire on DumpsterFirePress.com second page uh, right. of the site that that is our uh, that's our rolling e-zine slash blog so so everything's kind of housed there and and launched for now and yeah and gets announced through the ether through all that magic yes gotcha. <laughs> through all the wonderful social network neural networks out there well so you're doing it in russian as well is that what you're saying oh yeah i am <laughs> where we've expanded it we're uh yeah, Russian soon, Chinese you know, Al Jazeera. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll be getting sponsored by Al Jazeera, so it's cool. There, hey, there's that. You know, I would take their money in a heartbeat. That's just oh yeah. Highway. Uh, <laughs> call me a sellout if you will. Just call me a patriot because I love money. Yeah, All right. No. No. <laughs> no and, uh, and you know, we got some cool stuff coming. I got like publications. Uh, Set all through the through the month of May. I don't know if you know of John Compton. I have his new book coming out in March. It's probably more one more, of more the more well-known poets out there. Yeah, again, I think he's uh, he's been doing editing work with uh, Adam Levin Brown's Madness Muse magazine. Uh, I got a lot of unknowns too. You know, uh, I have this uh, I have this one Portuguese comic book artist I've been uh, conferring with via email, and I may have gra I may expand into graphic novels at some point. But yeah, we've uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Harry McNabb. He's another yeah, yeah. he's another writer. I'm proud to say uh, I will probably be releasing his uh, first full his first full collection of uh, short stories hopefully in May. So we we've got some good wow. stuff. Harry's been around a while, hasn't he? 
Yeah, yeah, he has. And uh, actually, he so is he's going like to be. Me. He hasn't ever published anything. Huh? <laughs> no, that, this guy, I will be. Mine's uh, in a garage. I, I made my mission. <laughs> To publish this guy, this guy is this guy's amazing, and you know what? He's the first prose, uh, he's the first prose author we're featuring on Voices from the Fire, and that will be on uh, that let me see, that will be on the uh, fifth. The fifth will be uh, yeah, I, so I'm, about I'm really the time, excited about the time we go live with this, you'll be uh, no, uh, yeah, I got uh, James Maj doing the cover of his uh, art, doing the cover of his book. It's you know, I, this is what I'm excited for, working with guys like Harry to get them out, working with guys like Roz. Uh, there's a uh, young lady I'm talking to right now. She has a lot of collage work, poetry. I, I worked with her years ago at a textbook company, and uh, she's a disabled uh, feminist queer. She's like, do you, have, do you have room for a voice like this? And I'm like, well, hell, you're, you need, yeah, hell yeah, I have room for you. Come on in, you right. know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and this is and this is what it's about. Yeah, it's not about making money. And what I do with the author is real simple. I'll edit their work for them. If they like what they see, I present them with a contract. I show them a PDF. If not, they move it on, move on. Daily and Buddha, then go to Cage and Mud Press. They can go to whoever. They can go to Rust Belt Press with it. Rogue Wolf Press. It, it doesn't matter. I'm press, press, press. That I'm saying right now. Right. And if they're good with that, you know, I, again, I have some contracts with some other artists. Uh, great, like, a Canadian artist, R. Keith. Uh, again, I'm going to mention James Maj. Uh, Carmen Benoit, I, um, another uh, this, another Canadian artist. She, uh, God, she just did, uh, she was our first voice of the fire. I did work with her on uh, Alien Buddha's uh, American Annie Hero. And, and, she, and she's just phenomenal. She's been phenomenal in terms of support. And again, it's like if I have the stock art, I'm going to present it to the to the writer, right? And they're going to decide. Uh, they get to pick. They get to choose their cover. If they have a cover art of their choosing, that's cool. The only thing I ask is the front of the cover. You, I want the art. art I want the artist's work to shine. Right. And right. we have a very visual society. Uh, let me show you John Doyle's book here. Uh, John Doyle's book, Leaving Henderson County. Fantastic, unadorned. You just have the title on the back. It's the way he wants it. You know, you got the you got the blurb, you got the logo, you got his name. Now, generally, with the artwork, we're going to have this. It's just going to be black. Author's name in white. Dumpster Fire Press logo. That's all I ask. It's not a big deal who publishes your book. That's why I have it that small. Right. I mean, I didn't hear let me let me ask you this, Mike. You know, I, I've been around small presses for a long time, and one yeah. of the, the key components that's always missing is, you know, the production side of things are are a mechanical thing that you can kind of automate, or I don't necessarily mean automate like with a robot. I mean you automate yeah. the process, so it's you step one, step two, step three. The 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 missing factor a lot of times is the promotion end. Are you guys addressing that in any way in particular, or is that left up to the artist? Because that tends to be the the way that that happens. You know, uh, being uh, relatively new at this and kind of a shitty businessman, and I'll be honest with you, I will post I will post things on my site. I sure. will post things within groups on social media. You will see it on Twitter. You will see it on LinkedIn. I haven't Instagrammed yet because I'm like 40 and I still don't understand yeah, Instagram. I don't either, but I, I mean, to I'll, I'll get to Instagram, but like right now, it's like, yeah, I'm promoting the best I can with all social uh, networking. Uh, a lot of the artists, a lot of the artists, the writers are probably better than I am. I, I'm trying to use uh, WordPress as best as I can, but. Right. But, you know, like I said, it's like you said, the promotions and uh, am I going to go out and buy ads? I mean, how I'm already operating at a loss because everyone gets a free contributing copy. And <laughs> I and internationally, like John Doyle, I, d I got his book to him, bought it myself with my Prime account at full price rather than author. So you get it as fast as hell and mail it to him priority to Ireland. <laughs> now, I mean, that's the shit I, I, I do. And, for my and, and I don't ask. To, you know, to highlight the fact that you may or may not be doing that. It's just that's no, always no, been fine. a missing piece. And, and yeah, that's one of the things that I've always done. I mean, I, you know, I think that a lot of the time the reason why 
stuff I put out there gets ignored is simply because folks get tired of seeing it. Every time I yeah. post one thing, it comes five times. And that's because I have separate accounts that serve separate separate functions and serve okay. separate audiences. So if you happen to be in my friends group, that chances are that means if I posted it on Emotional Orphan and on sound uh, on uh, uh, you know the Jax Virax page or my page for my business, you know, and my personal page, yeah. then that means you got it four times right in a row. Yeah. That says Jack Barnell and five different people, you know, posted this. Not to mention the nine Twitter accounts, you know, two LinkedIn accounts and everything else that I have. And they're all legit. It's not like I'm spamming. No, no. They're all different audiences I'm trying to reach with different things. And, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But yeah. to me, it's automated that I just do it that way. It's become non-effective because it, it's like yelling into a tunnel or something, you know. I mean, one of the things um, we'll do on the site too. When I uh, when I do a write up, I'll take the blurb, I'll highlight the author, I'll give my own personal review, and I'll take a sample of the book and I'll put it up there. Too. Right. Yeah, you know, I want to give people a taste of it, and that's the best thing. That's the best I can do. At the first the one's always free, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like junk, you know. And uh, William Burroughs will be the first to tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not that the William Burroughs of uh, a small press or anything. I'm I, I'm not that good. <laughs> no, but you know he he had connections in the typewriter business. What can you? Oh, uh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. All right. Kidding. So let's do this. I want to kind of bring it to a close. And and yeah. you know the 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 whole thing with with social yet distance is we want to bring together a pretty strong collective of a wide variety of artists and and all support each other in our work and in our promotion. I mean, that's, you know, I asked that question for a reason because I think that all of us as individuals are, we all have our networks of people that we can talk to and that listen to us. And I think if we can spread that out, it's kind of a net effect where you're throwing a net over a whole bigger audience than you really were. So, you know, if you take that as the goal in mind, how do you see a, uh, uh, a service or a collective like social yet distancing being able to really help. That's what I care about. Yeah, you know, actually I think with whoever you're drawing in, people who normally wouldn't come across Dumpster Provider Press are going to be tuning in. People who say are interested in my work or say uh, are interested in Dumpster Pro Fire Press are going to be tuning into you, vice versa. Right. And what I'm hoping to do is it may garner a little interest in the voices of the fire. It may get a few more submissions. It may cause a few more book sales. Uh, you know, it may you know someone may watch this and they're going to be like, oh, Dumpster Fire Press, and they're going to see our latest release is uh, Brenda Christie's uh, Strands of Struggle. They're going to read the poem 14 Days. And they may buy, they might buy a copy, and that would be cool if they would buy a copy. It'd be cool if they would buy uh, fifteen fucking copies, so uh, the author could make some money. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what I see. I, you know, we're just a, I'm just asking for a bit of exposure and right. uh, reach people who normally wouldn't reach us, and maybe listen to some of those voices that uh, that I'm bringing forth that want to be heard. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I mean that, exactly that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's what we do as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, and and Fran Locke, who you haven't had the chance to meet yet, but she's in London and uh, she's she'll be the co-host. And, you know, she brings that same mindset with a completely different view from her life and where she lives and the type of education they receive in, in England. Yeah. And, you know, all, there's just a wealth of difference. Um, in, in the way that we present things and the respect that poets get over there. I mean, certainly there's very few who are getting wealthy, but people know who people are. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, and I, when I say people, I mean the public, not just, um, you know, a, a tunnel of poets talking to each other or, or throwing yeah. verse or whatever the case might be. So, 
wide variety of voices, and I, I would like for all those voices to be heard, and whatever tools I have at disposal, I can assure you we will use to uh, to, to do that for you guys and whoever else comes across our path. That's got and, you know, we appreciate that, you know. It's... Of course you do. Yeah, that's what the kickbacks are for, Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't do it for the money. All right, man. I'm gonna get, I'll give you an IOU on this one. I appreciate you taking the time, Bo. And, uh, you know, this will be up in a couple of days. Uh, meanwhile, everybody go and check out the Dumpster Fire Press. Um, remember where you can go and find them. Give them a list of your links, Mike. Okay, we got dumpsterfirepress.com. Uh, that, that's pretty much all I have. I mean, you can look me up Mike Zone LinkedIn, Mike Zone Facebook, Clockwork Oomph. Uh, that, that's it. I'm not that exciting. Oh, <laughs> Zone Michael on Twitter. Oh, because, Zone uh, Michael on Twitter. Zone Michael on Twitter. I don't really use my Twitter. It's just linked to the WordPress and I, everything automatically gets put there. Yeah, you know, I'm not the greatest social media guy. I may as well be a Luddite. I am a there are, there I are have people who can, you know there are people who could be hired to do that for a nominal fee. Look uh look me up on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, right on. And man, take it easy and All right, brother. Y'all have a good day out there and uh we will talk to you soon, man. Peace. See ya. Thanks everybody for tuning in to the Social Yet Distanced podcast. We appreciate your time. Hope you had a good time. And uh we'll play you out now with Nothing. See ya.